Now, due time for Spider Nose Scooter. This is the Planetary Defense Coordinators game. And we'll talk about how we're going to save ourselves from the um, impending asteroid blast. But we're basically here to play Spider Solitaire. I want to show you the setup screen. This is the busy screen we set up with. Um, and, you know, Spider, Spider Web, Spider McGillicuddy, the dreaded Spider Mac. Uh, I cleverly arranged it so you couldn't see all of the title for the other book I'm promoting, Ms. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't know what to do about that. Maybe this. Yeah, that's it. All right. <laughs> Hope you got uh, plenty of stimulus. Well, that was weird. I stopped the recording in a vein. See down here in this corner, see where the thing is flashing? I tried to, s to start Spider Solitary. I pressed this thing, which stopped it. So there's a strange little jerk there. So now here's the game. Now we'll quit messing around and get on with it. Spider Solitaire. iMac version. If you're a regular viewer of this absurdity, you know all about it. If you're just dropping in for the first time, it might be a, it might be a revelation for you. Great game, great game. Good for relaxing. Good for stopping thinking about stuff. <laughs> or it's good, a, a kind of a mind reboot. Say you're in the middle of a, a sculpture project and you're hammering along there and you knock off the nose. That could be distressing. So you go play a little spider solitaire. Stop thinking about the broken nose thing. There's always gorilla glue, you know. Lighten up, man. Not so serious. Um, it does that. And if you're also, if you're all concerned about politics, very easy to get all riled up about politics these days, just go play a little spider solitaire. Better than the benzodiazepines. Way better than the opioids. In fact, there are no chemicals to speak of involved with spider solitaire unless you just want to bring them into the mix took long enough to find that didn't it not really sharp tonight i can tell some nights when i'm really going to cook right along and see the plays just as soon as they appear before my wondering eyes uh, but tonight doesn't seem to be one of those I may try an experiment with that start-stop bit. May finish the first deal here, turn off the recorder, and um, go play a couple of deals and turn the recorder back on. It sort of leap you through part of the game. I'm just not sure whether someone would feel cheated if they turned it. See, oh boy, you're so slow. A little spider solitaire, and then I truncated the game. We'll see how the game goes. Make the call on that. Um, astronomy alert. Astronomy alert. The Perseid meteor showers are coming next week. 13, 14, 15? No. 11, 12, 13 of August. The Perseid meteor showers. What is it? Cox Tuttle? Oh, that's not right. Something Tuttle. Meteor went by some decades ago and left a trail of particles in space and old Earth cruises through that trail once a year. And we usually get quite a few meteor. I love them. They'll lay on my deck maybe on the, uh, the air mattress. Snuggle something up to keep warm. Maybe a dog. Maybe have an Airedale come put their head on my chest and watch the meteors. Well, so, 
just move right along here into a land of very few moves. I'm saying very few moves. I could move a four from either side, and ironically, very typically of Spider Mac, there's the same one that would be. I'll do this, and then I'll do that, and I'll do this. So, yeah, not too bad. Not too expensive. Didn't have to block many things or waste many cards. Which is always reassuring to me for some reason. Yeah. Politically wise, uh, Secretary of State, ex Exxon Mobil guy, Rex Tillerson, said we need to talk to North Korea as opposed to blowing each other up, which seemed reasonable to me. And sort of the first cogent piece of craft. What kind of craft? Statesman craft out of uh, Brother Tillerson so far. I, I mean, I don't really know everything he's been doing, but it hadn't been making a lot of noise in those news sites I haunt. Do you haunt news sites? Show up almost every day? Read all kinds of stuff? Sometimes make comments? That's a real haunt when you make the comments. I do quite often and frequently get really nasty responses from some people. <laughs> some guy on Breitbart told me to go crawl back in my slime hole to some comment I made. I think about Breitbartians, people who do the comment game all the time, like me except most of them are way right-wing. So we disagree mostly, and when I put in something they really disagree with, and many, many of them revert to name-calling. It's a sort of a bullyish way to do politics. Well, a double four block. Well, fiddle on you, boy. I could do this. I have all those jacks up there. Which one do I like the least? This is a harlequin. Black, red, black, red, black, red, black. So that's about as blocked up as you can get. Is that the good one to do? I don't think so. Maybe this one is the good one to do. Because I can do that and have a hole. My first hole. I love holes. And um, now I can move something in the hole. I'll look first under a little virgin seven. There's a two moves. I thought I saw the red seven. I didn't. So that's silly. But there is a red eight. Can't argue with that. Reminding myself that I wanted to compliment Jeff Flake, Senator Flake. How did you ever get elected with a name like Flake? But he's a good guy. Um, he and our New Mexico senator did a reality show together. which is not your standard senatorial behavior, if you ask me, and I'm glad of it. Martin Heinrich, Senator Martin Heinrich, and Senator Jeff Flake, both two sort of in-shape, middle-aged, good-looking guys, went to some island somewhere and coexisted. Yea, though they were Democrat and Republican, Heinrich and the Democrat, Flake the Republican, for seven days in primitive circumstances. That was fun. It really was. And brought a sense of camaraderie and good brotherhood and get alongness that might actually lead to stuff like 
legislation getting done were our representatives and such to behave that way more frequently. Anyway, he's got a new book out today, Senator Flake does, and it picks on Trump. He uses the uh, exact title that Barry Goldwater used for his rather skinny book back in the whenevers, 60s, wow. um, Conscience of a Conservative. And he picks on Trump and he picks on the Republican Party for kind of losing their way in the conservative jungle. Ooh, so close to a score there. Maybe it was a magic word, conservative jungle, conservative jungle. No, that didn't work. But it takes guts and cojones, as we say here in the Southwest, to buck your party's president. He makes a point he's not really much his party's president. But uh, anyway, Conscience of a Conservative by Jeff Flake might be worth reading. I guess I'll block that seven in the hopes that turns into something good. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll do this first while I'm examining possibilities. And look at that. Bong! A score! So, not all bad. I think I'm six dollars ahead. I think that's about it for that, so let's take another one. See, if you hadn't been watching Spatter and Old Scooter tonight, you might not have heard about Jeff Flake's book. Oh. But he was getting a lot of good press. He was showing up uh, uh, at all the talk shows. Because they're all a little amazed that he's not licking uh, Herr Trump's boots, I think. Hope he sells lots of books. I wish I would sell lots of books. Selling lots of books is a blessing. Three, two. Oh, this is the last card, darlings. And it's not going to go any place very far. If I did that, then I could put that queen up there. It's absolutely no good at all. Oh, I got a 55. I like 55s at my private numerology. I was, um, I graduated from high school in 1955. As I recall, I can't really get it specified in my mind, but I think I had a car with a license plate had a 55 in it. But I can't remember which car. Maybe the old 88. Yellow convertible. Los Angeles. 66. A car that said 55 and 66 would be pretty cool. All right, gang. Was there anything else I wanted to do? Oh, the reason of the planetary defense comment is there's a good deal of action going on to find every Earth intercepting, Earth crossing asteroid. And I just happened to read a bunch of stuff on the NASA website and several other places about uh, what we could do to stop one if we saw it coming and was going to try to do a dinosaur bash on our head that we probably now, if we had a little lead time, maybe a year, we might be able to move it out of the way so it wouldn't hit us. And I thought that was a very upbeat concept. So... Don't get hit by any flying rocks. I'll remind you of the Perseids. Good night.